Greetings humans and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about how the US is getting our asses handed to us by much smaller and much poorer countries. We're number one. We're number one. We're number one at nearly nothing that matters. As the total badass, inimitable James Baldwin said, I love America more than any other country in this world and exactly for this reason, I insist on the right to criticize her perpetually. So here we go. The number one exporter of agricultural products in the world is the United States. And number two is a tiny country called the Netherlands, which is 237 times smaller. The Netherlands only has about 36 square miles of greenhouses, which is only about 50% larger than the island of Manhattan. In these Dutch greenhouses, they're able to use 1 25th the water of traditional agriculture with a very low threat of any contamination and zero use of pesticides. We've been able to eliminate chemical pesticides in greenhouses and reduce the use of antibiotics by 60%. This article states, in the early 2000s, the Dutch government made a national commitment to sustainable agriculture. Huh. National commitment. That sounds a lot like socialism. Meanwhile, Hungary is investing 1 billion euro to build a massive greenhouse structure that's powered entirely by renewable energy. They'll be working with the German developers, FACT. This will also be the location of the world's largest offshore fish farm. This massive development will also include about a thousand homes for workers as well as schools, shops, and hotels. That sounds a lot like socialism, like communism. Speaking of communism, well, it turns out that US sanctions actually uh, might have worked out for Cubans in one way. Their water's clean. As a result of US sanctions, Cuba was basically forced to adopt a more sustainable agricultural model. Now we go all the way across the Pacific to another small island nation that has gone leaps and bounds ahead of the United States in terms of its sustainable agriculture. Now, obviously, Japan has a pretty high population, not a lot of arable land, and they're relatively tech savvy. So it should come as no surprise that Japan is leading the world in vertical farming. Now they're building a new techno farm. In the techno farm, they can grow 650 heads of lettuce per square meter a year, compared with 300 at its current farm, and only five outdoors. And it will only use 110 milliliters of water per head of lettuce, which is only 1% of what's needed to grow outdoors. Techno Farm will also use custom designed LEDs that require about 30% less energy. This year, Japan not only saw its hottest summer ever, but it also had one of its wettest typhoon seasons of all time. Unexpected weather conditions, most likely caused by climate change. Meanwhile, in the deserts of the UAE, a French startup called Agricool is now growing strawberries. Agricool has raised millions of dollars in an investment and has opened four of their cool tainer farms throughout Paris. Agricool eventually decided to put its next cool tainer in the Sustainable City, which is located just outside of Dubai. Now guys, make sure that you mark yourself as safe from the 2020 arugula shortage. Our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody affected. But it's not all bad in the USA, and I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. They're not exactly known for their environmentalism. Despite the fact that this is a GOP, grand old party proposal, they're working on a bill right now that would commit the US to planting billions of trees every year. Wow, look at that. Honestly, just looking at that makes me feel good. On the one hand, this is great because trees do pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and help us to hopefully breathe cleaner air. At the same time, we can't pretend that just planting trees is going to solve climate change. And unfortunately, this feels a little bit more like the same old symbol over substance. When you've rolled back regulations for clean air and clean water, and you've allowed drilling on public lands, and you've loosened coal plant regulations, pulled out of the Paris Climate Accord, feels like symbol over substance. At this new development in the Bronx, not only will they have affordable housing units, but it'll be nature focused, including a greenhouse on the property. And as you can see, greenery built into the facade of the building. And finally, it turns out that microbes that are found naturally in soil have the same effect as antidepressant prescription medication 
without any of the withdrawal or the side effect. These microbes in the soil cause cytokine levels to rise, which can lead to the production of more serotonin. A lack of serotonin has been linked to depression, anxiety, OCD, and bipolar disorders. These antidepressant bacteria microbes are being investigated for improvements in cognitive function, Crohn's disease, and even rheumatoid arthritis. So it might feel like common sense that spending time with plants will make you happy, but now we know a little bit more about why it feels so good to get so dirty.